Hello, everybody. So today I'm going to be talking about the Ant-Man and the Wasp movie. This will be a spoiler review, so spoilers, beware. And, I mean, this would be kind of like a smaller spoiler review, so to speak. If I don't end up doing a... If we don't end up doing a podcast spoiler, then there will be a longer one. This is just going to kind of be my spoilery thoughts on the movie. Um, Just while it's fresh and... Because I just saw it, so, you know, all that good stuff. So let me start with how the movie starts off. So the movie, of course, starts off with a flashback of actually younger Janet and uh, Hank. And this, of course, shows us all the stuff that's going to, that leads up to the, them needing to go to stop the missile and Janet getting stuck. Then we get to go see Scott in house arrest, which was pretty good. And I like how they did the flashbacks. Um, Janet, or Hank and Hope are very mad at Scott. And, of course, Ghost is existence, is real. And she actually was, like, they really liked the way they did with did Ghost. Because basically her whole thing was that, like, she's, like, this crazy, like, her, she was caught in this explosion, except she didn't really die. She's kind of like fading in and out of the quantum realm. And so Bill Foster, a.k.a. Goliath, took her in. And actually trying to help her. Now, they, of course, Hank is trying to go into the quantum realm to save Janet. And so, and Scott in, connected with Janet in the quantum realm. And it's very interesting to see that kind of connection. Especially close to the end of the movie where Janet takes over Scott's body. Because, like, she kind of put an antenna in him. So she could take over him in the quantum realm. And, like, just watching Scott act as Janet and kind of, like, being Janet with Hank and uh, Hope is was really fun. And Michael Douglas in this movie, again, was beautifully acting. Like, it's like, like, he was the best actor. And I think Marvel also got something really good. They actually managed to figure out, like, how to make a scene suspenseful. Because when, of course, they had to go rescue, he had to go, someone had to go rescue Janet. So, what happened was they would, they put Michael Douglas's character, Hank, into the actual machine to go rescue, um, the, Janet. And so this, because you know that they're both expendable characters, you don't know if they're gonna make it out alive. And that really so, adds more how long have you been Ant-Man again? Then if you put Scott in, you know that he has yeah, to get out. And just sort so of happened. Like, 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 you know, I was you don't trying know to fight bad guys like you. Live. Because they don't, you know, I'm broken. And that's like, you can I seem to mess it up almost every time. time. Like, like, it's really having the suspense, right? Because you're not, Maybe you, you don't just know. need someone watching like, your back. They could leave. Hi. Or maybe get it, or get out. Like, it's a really good way to... Like, it's like something other students would say. Dr. Pym, I actually heard what happened to you. You opened up the quantum realm. Dude, that's why it's crazy. It could be gold. He, like, walks through walls and stuff. He stole your tech. Um, and honestly, again, the ghost... Now she wants to take over the world or whatever. Who would have believed that in your hour of need, you would turn to us? Because we love you. Do you remember? You... That's us. Like, you sympathize. The old Chester Pratt. This goes to him. And man in the wash. And teaming up. Follow my lead. And I'm just going to be a superhero. Cassie wanted to be a superhero. She seems really made me mad. More intense. Like, if they don't get through this, I'm going to be a superhero. No, no. Then I'm going to be a superhero. If they don't get through this, You go low, I'll go high. I have um, wings. Why would I go so, low? We didn't die. I don't want to die. We didn't die. By developing what I miss. We were just tiny. I was partners with Hank on a project called Goliath. How big did you get? My record. I'm feet. going to. You? I'm going to use 65 my red liquid. Feet. 65. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh. I want to save myself. If you two are I don't want to fade into sizes. nothingness. 65. I don't like my powers. I want to get rid of them. Like, this, these aren't powers. Like, these aren't these cool, amazing powers. But these were like... These are like... a. This is like a punishment. I'm going to fade into nothingness. Right? It's not cool. So I think that's really interesting to way to frame a villain. I think the villain was the standout of this movie and the wasp. And I'm going to probably end up on a tangent about the wasp because the wasp was probably the third best character of this movie. And just the way she was, just like she, her acting again, like she was able to stay serious while Scott was acting funny. And I mean, if you're able to do that, then you deserve like 7,000 awards because honestly, just her and her like in her suit and stuff. If they don't give me a wasp spin-off movie, I'm angry. Oh, of course, if she does survive because she does get snapped. And honestly, if you haven't seen this movie and you're watching this review, then go see it because oh my god, that was such a good movie. Um it's probably one of my favorite and again, the developing of the villain while still keeping a story is great. I didn't even see the whole uh Bill Foster thing coming. And there's so many small things they hint at. And again, you just see, like, you don't see the Edgar Wrightiness that you did in the first one because, of course, the aspects of Edgar Wright, of course, weren't included because Edgar Wright had nothing to do with this movie. But you do see Peyton Reed kind of come out. And I was kind of, like, there was in a moment where I was not laughing. This movie was completely funny and emo- it was an emotional roller coaster because they still managed to make huge amounts of jokes. And honestly, this movie is probably one of the best MCU movies. Um, but And it's also, like, I was thinking about this, knowing the knowledge that Peyton Reed wanted to do a 60s um, Fantastic Four movie. And I was just thinking, he would do a great job if this is how he did it. Because guess what? You could do, if you did this with the Fantastic Four, it would be great. Like, if you did it in the time period of, like Hank Pym, Howard Stark, it would be great. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't do that. And although we didn't get any direct Infinity War references besides the dusting, I think this movie was perfect, standalone, nice, fun, and Louise. He was amazing. Again, acting phenomenal. Um, I honestly don't even know why you, you would choose to not use him. Like, honestly, like... If he doesn't have a bigger part in the future... Well, he had a huge part in this one. Um, but honestly, these characters were amazing. And I think... I don't know if I like... Like, I don't know. But the FBI and all those... The Agent Wu and all those good people. Then there's the mob bus. There's just so much in this movie. You couldn't cover if you're talking about it for a year. Because there's just so many things in this movie that just overwhelm you. But it's so good. It's like you don't miss anything. It's almost like Infinity War where it overwhelms you with stuff. But you don't actually feel anything. It's kind of like they drop one joke. Then they're on to the next thing. And you kind of have to catch them. You're like, whoa, it's a lot of stuff. And I really think that if you put this onto perspective. That this movie is probably. Like this movie has so strong actors. That it was just amazing. So overall, this movie, I think, is a 9.3 out of 10. There were some issues with it. Um, I think there were times... They, there were things that you didn't need to add in, like making... Um, like with the whole mom, like uh, ex-wife of of Scott. Like, I didn't like that part. I don't think she was necessary. I also don't think that some of the... I think there are too many jokes... And you kind of lost a lot. Like the emotion moments. It's kind of like a Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. But better. So it's like a better version of Volume 2 of Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like there's so many jokes in it. That one minute you you feel this emotional moment. And then there's a joke. Right? You feel like something's going to happen. And there's a joke. And I think that's something that really was Guardians 2. It's kind of like. And I think that's another thing. Right? It's kind of like you turn it to 10. Because people like the aspect. That, like they liked the jokes. It was on like a seven. Then they turn it to a ten because guess what? People like that. So I think that's kind of the thing. But overall, I mean, a really good movie, and I can't wait to see Avengers four now. 
like even more than I did before. And I'm I kind of wonder how they're going to do this, especially if they go with the five year time jump, because honestly, um, they need they're going to time like how do you explain all this? There's just so many loose ends, and there's no movies that take place in the present before this. It's like Captain Marvel takes place in the nineties, and then um, in Avengers four, there's nothing. So how do you explain all of this? How will Avengers 4 work? Will it be a seven-hour movie? Because you have to explain everything. Like, you're going to have to explain everything that happened if you do a five-year time jump. And then explain, like, how they're going to defeat Thanos in a two-hour movie. Like, this, it's going to be insane if they can do this. Because I thought this movie would tie up a lot of loose ends. You kind of have, like, sympathy. You're kind of like, eh. Now I understand. But no, they just threw more questions at you. And I think this movie, and I think they did that in 30 seconds. They really just changed everything in 30 seconds. And the movie didn't really focus on anything specific. I'm kind of happy about that. Um, like, it was kind of on its own. So again, a very Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. But it was a good version of that movie. Because there were some, they had some of the same issues. But it also had much stronger strengths than that movie did. Um, and a much stronger villain, in my opinion. So, let me know what you thought of the movie. You can talk spoilers down below. Please like, subscribe, comment, share your thoughts, click the notifications bell, follow us on social media. And of course, if you, of course, see you next time. Bye.